This is Star Talk. Here's a personal question for both of you, and it's from Angela Marone from Instagram. And Angela says, what kind of major challenges did you personally face to get where you are today? Okay. So this is this is your own personal story. I mean, there's no real right or wrong answer to this. It's not scientifically based, but it is experientially based. Is there anything that you can think of that uh, uh, from a gender specific standpoint where you, you, you ran into some obstacles on your path or your journey to this point? I I think I'm really lucky in that I didn't face any major challenges, but I think unfortunately, like, you know, for better or for worse, that's one of the reasons that I'm here as a scientist, is because I didn't face major challenges. Now, now that is a very good point. The fact that you are where you are is because you received the kind of nurturing and assistance necessary to put anybody in your position, and you were just able to do it. I sometimes I kind of think that, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I but I do know other people have overcome major challenges, and I know that they're like smarter than me and tougher than me, and like, and I know, and also thinking about the fact that so many people that did face more challenges than me don't make it, even though they want and to. See, that's what and I was. That's got to be fixed, right? I was going to say yeah, that yeah. Uh, the real problem is uh, it, those who face the challenges and go yeah, to hell with this. You know, this is just too much, man. I can't, you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's fair. I mean, because some of the challenges are just, you know, I grew like grew up with like a house and enough food and and things like that. And that's Mm -hmm. something that, you know, a lot of people don't have. And it actually frightens me on a day-to-day basis, like what we could be missing because not everybody is taken care of, not everybody has the same opportunities, like what geniuses are not even living, you know, out of infancy or something like that because, you know, we don't take care of everybody kind of equally across the planet. Yeah, there is a price to be paid by human capital, uh, uh, inhuman capital, uh, by this disparity. Yeah, disparity yeah. exacts a price upon all societies. So, yeah. you know. And science uh, is a product of society. And Summer, do you have a, a, an actual? I, I have a, a quite a similar story to Emily, I think, in the sense that I was really fortunate to have amazing women mentors Ooh. at every step almost. Okay. Um, even though we were collectively still the minority at every point as far as gender minority. Um, so... I, first of all, I'm raised by a single mother. Okay. I'm an only child. Uh, she's, she's not in technical science fields at all, but she supported me the entire time mm-hmm. through my pursuit of it. Um, one of my mentors in college was the only tenured female engineering professor in the department. Uh, I actually, so I came through engineering, so I have a little winding road story, but I worked in aerospace engineering and my boss was a woman. Mm-hmm. And she was one of the few women. Uh, grad school, my advisor was a woman also and that was that was kind of random. Like in my particular experience, I didn't get to choose that person. I chose a project, and that turned out to be run by one of the women who had been there since she was an undergrad. Gotcha. So it was kind of amazing. Um, and then I think personally, which may have slightly been affected by gender, um, when I was in grad school is when I had like a, a major depressive episode, and that was mm-hmm. my first encounter with depression. Okay. And I do think that there was. Being um, the minority in the group and also just not being confident enough to seek out help at various stages um, and also share that information in the academic environment that I was in sort of kept me back, made that take a bigger, made me take a bigger hit due to that. Okay, yeah. All right. Well, you know, I I love the fact that um, what you both kind of uh, focused on is that when you get... Um, <clears throat> when you get the proper push and, uh, and, and, and assistance, it, it makes things easier. And I say this to everybody, nobody gets anywhere without help. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's all there is to it. Yeah. And so the, the more help that is available for anyone, yeah. uh, the better you're going to do at anything. Yeah. So, you know, I, and, and just think of it this way. When you look at uh, the NFL and the NBA, you would be so shocked to find how many players 
have a family member, father, uncle, somebody who played professional that professional sport. Oh, oh interesting. Yeah, and everybody thinks like these guys are just Coming natural phenoms yeah, that yeah. came out of nowhere. You have to right. recognize. Right. And you got to recognize. No, that yeah. guy had somebody mentoring him from the time he was three yeah. years old, put a basketball in his hand, a football in his yeah. hand. Look at the Manning brothers. I mean, um, there's actually three of them, but only two count. Um, <laughs> I always think about oh. that poor third one, yeah. But He's the an insurance salesman right. or something. Yeah, no. but the fact fact is they're the son of Archie Manning. Yeah. Okay. So, right. you know, the health thing is a very big thing is yeah. what I'm saying. So that's, also, yeah. that's a really good lesson too for science in general, like science, you know, you hear the, the myths of the lone genius and that right. kind of a thing, but right. science is a, is a community and team effort and group effort and you can't get anywhere. And especially in grad school. So I used to work on a program that helped, um, post back students sort of get prepared for grad school. And the thing that you really have to drill into them is that you need to ask for help right. and it's yeah. good to ask it's for help. For us, right. And you should identify resources outside yourself. You can't do it alone. Absolutely. Also knowing that it, that even the grad school is a thing, like the grad school is something where you keep going to school, but you get paid to do it. And and so like, say that again now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you don't get not much. Very much. I believe Chuck Nice might be going back to grad school. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, but it's not. You know, it's not like you know, law school and med school are kind of more popular. You you have to pay for those, and it's a huge amount of money. But graduate school, especially in the sciences, is generally paid for. You you know, you work, but your working is teaching or doing research or something like that. You're not paid a huge amount of money. No, but, but you're still. generally paid en enough to live on. And, and you're going a, to school. Yeah, and you're going to school to get a PhD or to get a master's degree. And this is something that, because it's a relatively small amount of the population that does it, it's not very well known that it's even a path. Right. And so if you don't already have a scientist in your life, you might not even know right. that it's a thing that you can do. You don't. You also don't have to go to grad school and only become a professor. Mm -hmm. You can go to grad school and then, you know, uh, you can get a PhD in physics and even, you know, then work in finance or become an astronaut or, you know, work in fashion, all, all kinds of things. Right, because, right, wow. Yeah. That is a, a who knew? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm making it rain, bitches. I'm going to grad school. <laughs> Ah, okay. And I think the interesting <laughs> thing about that too is actually it counters the leaky pipeline example because right. um, I like to think of it more, it's not that you're losing these people, um, but you are for some reasons, the pipeline is not encouraging them to go on, but some of them are making these alternative choices, which yeah. we shouldn't even call alternative because right. the idea yeah. is that there's just this huge range of careers. There's a, a lot of options at every level. People with astronomy PhDs that work for like Etsy and Stitch Fix and Netflix and GitHub and, you know, all kinds of software companies and mm -hmm. all kinds of Internet companies and things like that. And so you can really do all kinds of different things with a science PhD. Wow, that's amazing. That's great stuff. Well, there you go, kids. Stay in school. <laughs> For a long, long time. For a long, long time.